Um, the second one and the third one are like this. So onboarding, gamification, conversion, not necessarily, like they, they might be slight, slight changes, but eventually it's, it's something like this. For example, this is part of onboarding as well, right? But you can gamify those experiences. Now for the last thing, uh, the long-term change is uh, forming a habit to save energy. That was you know, the ultimate result of this, app, of this product. And we already know how is that called, right? So this already creates the habit for you to save the energy. And there are other products like this who manage to, to really bring this idea of persuade, persuasive design and manage to make it work with, uh, in your daily lives. So this is Fitbit, right? It does the same thing, so it forms the long-term habit. Now, what I'm gonna talk about is not really uh, the habit-forming stuff. It's, I'm going to talk about the, the, the persuasion to act, so something that we do on a daily basis. And um, yeah, so the concept of persuasion is not new um, because of this. Because people, uh, people don't change, the brain, brains don't change, it's the technology that, and world around us that is changing. Now, that's why this practice exists for ages. Um, it was first um, practiced in, uh, in uh, propaganda, like, you know, military propaganda. So um, it's been around for quite a while, and uh, and yeah, that's uh, that's what I'm going to talk about. So I'm not going to have to talk about the long-term change, although it is covered by the persuasive design. I'm going to talk about the short-term change. Um, so what it what it takes to take an action? Um, what do you need to do in order to be um, taking an action? Um, that action in digital design is called conversion and. Uh, you know, a, a smart guy called uh, BJ Fogg, this is his website, uh, he created this model. So you need some kind of motivation and ability to, to um, carry out an action. And all the triggers fail if your motivation is low and your ability is lower. That means, you know, you, you don't understand the stuff and you are not really motivated to learn about it to, to, in order to carry out the, the task at hand. Whereas it, when the ability is high, so you understand it's, it's super simple to carry out the task for you, and the motivation is high, so you're like pumped that you should do this, uh, that's when you are more likely to act. Now, how do we, how can we apply it? So I'm gonna talk about the ability to act, because there's, there's a two axes on the diagram, right? So ability to act um, is very well covered in this book, uh, which was written by our CEO, and um, he mentions uh, six. One, two, three, four, five, six points. Um, yeah, six of them um, about um, analysis of your website or web page um, and uh, how to how to tackle with that. Um, while the urgency one is related to the motivation, the rest of them are related to ability to act. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to talk about this. Uh, I'm just going to briefly mention the, the value proposition. Basically, this is the first very basic concept of uh, your digital product. The users or the people or the customers or the visitors need to know whether this, the thing that they are seeing is the right thing for them. So this is more like a stay or go decision. Um, and it's related to the concept of pre-attentive um, processing, which I have no clue what it's about. But it's important. So. If you want to really delve deep into that, you can do your research. Um, now, this stuff is something you guys should be working or you, are, you guys are familiar with, right? So um, user experience designers are doing this kind of stuff. So they're uh, providing relevant content, relevant content, removing anxiety, creating clarity with the, the layouts and information architecture, removing distractions and um, on top of that, creating efficiency and the like. Now, these people are much better in doing that than we are, uh, but um, the user experience is all about this. So this is the field that you are familiar with most, most probably. Um, so this is uh, one of the concepts that we are dealing, um, dealing with on a, on a, like a, it's on a daily bread almost like. Uh, so cognitive load or cognitive strain makes people wary of their actions. Um, this means whenever you feel like you need to think about something, you start to be more cautious about it, right? Um, this is from a Daniel Kahneman's book, Thinking Fast and Slow. And uh, it's, it's kind of like you get that feeling that you should really think about this 
the single element. So if you see a form that is extremely complicated, you, it makes you stop and think about whether it's actually worth start filling it out. It's a very basic concept. And, and when you see something complicated, it decreases your confidence and, and decreases in your trust eventually. And that leads to, to decreased likelihood of taking desirable action. So you're less compliant with the, the request at hand. Um, another, uh, another concept is admitted bias, which is user's prediction of uh, typical outcomes. So um, that's why I'm wearing the jacket um, tonight. So you would feel like I'm the authority, but I'm not. <laughs> if I had glasses on, it would work even better because you would assume I read a lot of books or something, but I don't. So um, I would look smarter, but I'm, yeah, I'm not doing that. But that is an example of admitted bias. Um, another concept is automaticity. So, um, you know, when you're installing stuff from, from Windows, you would click uh, next button so many times without even noticing what the contents of these windows are. That's that's called uh, automaticity, and it's you know you're trying to filter out the details. Um, the next thing is um, this is uh, applied in our in our practice. So uh, two of these concepts are specifically taken out of this um, out of user experience field and applied in this conversion rate optimization or data driven uh, design. And those are tunneling and reduction. Um, tunneling means you would uh, guide people through the series of steps of the process, um, progressively revealing um, some of the information. And reduction means you are reducing the number of options for them to easily decide. So you're removing the analysis paralysis. Um, and how would, you, how would you do that? So um, let's look at one of the examples that we did in our company, uh, an example of reduction and tunneling in product design, and that is, this is one of our clients. Don't worry about the design. I'm, I'm gonna talk about this part here. Just notice how we removed those social icons, and the goal was to make people click this button and fill out something here, and they would, you know, that was our ultimate goal here, and uh, what we did is we removed those icons, and this reduced a 22.5 increase in uh, fill ups on that form, just removal of those icons. So that is the concept of reduction. Um, another example of a uh, concept of tunneling uh, specifically is in on Amazon, right? So when you get to the checkout process, uh, the, the, the whole UI changes and all of the options, navigation elements, search bar, everything is removed in order for you to tunnel you through the, the, through, through the funnel. So you would you wouldn't have many options, right? So you have just, you can count on one hand or two hands, and that's all you get. So there isn't a lot where you can, you can, uh, you can mess up with, right? Now, uh, there are many applications in product design. I don't know why, but um, we could do something like this. Um, this is an onboarding experience, right? So you have, um, this is a navigation bar, and as you start with the onboarding experience, usually you would see like these little popovers telling you, oh, you should try this, you should try that, and look at this feature, and we introduce something. Now, why don't we do it the way like we continuously reveal, progressively reveal the parts of the interface that we are trying to describe? So, for example, hey, this is interesting. Now, look at this bar, this is interesting, and this might be interesting as well. So we are, you know, the, the, the difference is I'm revealing the parts of the UI as I walk through it. So there aren't many options that users can mess up with it. Now, um, yeah, that's interesting as well. Now, this concept is not new, and, uh, and it's not really used in uh, productivity apps or utility uh, products. It's, it's used in games. This is um, Clash of Clans, and you would start with very limited UI, right? So you have only a couple of things here and a couple of things there. But as you progress through the, the onboarding experience, they reveal parts. And they are great at doing this. They are great at, at, at creating engaging experiences. So, and they are great at data. Um, so they, have no, they know that this thing is working. So that's why I'm urging you to use this in your products if you can. Um, so let's talk about credibility. Uh, which is a huge uh, part of uh, ability on that diagram, right? Um, why it's in ability field? Well, it's a, 
it kind of tells you whether that task that you're doing is is the right thing to do, and it, it motivates you, and it creates a trust. Uh, so whether it's a safe for you to proceed. Now, there are lots of tips um, that you can uh, cover, uh, that I can cover in this uh, presentation, but I'm just going to mention them here, and uh, you can you can check them out later. Um, this is from a from a Nielsen Norman group. Um, and uh, I participated on their credibility and trust workshop in Europe, and we went through all these things, um, and they have a very, very good evidence for every single uh, tip mentioned here. But um, yeah, they, and they actually mentioned a lot of this stuff on their website as well. So now let's, let's shift to the motivation part. Um, there is one single figure that is like ultimate God of persuasive design, and this is this is the guy. Um, I don't know whether there's the right pronunciation of his name is uh, Cialdini or Chialdini, uh, but I'm, I'm going to refer to him as Cialdini because it's more natural. And uh, he created a set of uh, six principles um, that you can use um, when persuasive people, for persuasive people. Uh, these are like the topics you cover are usually more than that. These six elements. So. Um, I'm going. To, I'm not going to go through them because they're uh, they're kind of like. I'm going to mention them because the concept is repeated in every single book. Um, but um, I'm going to refer to them from from the user experience design perspective. Now, um, yeah. So these, if you if you took these and, uh, for example, the first one, right, authority, um, that is widely used uh, with uh, with TV on billboards. Uh, he's the box guy expert here. And you can see his authority with the women around and everything. He's, he's doing a good job there. Um, and you know, another authority is this guy. Uh, he most probably smells really good. Um, <laughs> and you know, that's another example of authority in uh, in you know in, as one of the persuasive principles. Um, now, if you wanted to apply all of them in a single sentence, you would most probably come up with this. Um, so this is you know. This sentence is trying to persuade me. So, Sommelier, uh, Scarlett Johansson, gives you a sample of wine you can buy. Or, people's choice were the best in the class from our limited private reserve, and you already promised to buy it last time, remember? So, you know, if just to visualize that concept, uh, I'm going to do this. <laughs> Although that's not wine with champagne, but you get the gist. Uh, you get the gist. So, so um, so there's uh, a lot more in uh, digital design that we uh, apply from to we kind of add to Cialdini principles, um, and those are these uh, things. So it's completeness. We hate uh, to see something that is not in the right order or something that is you know like not in the right angle as it should be. So we like to fix stuff, and we like to fix stuff in our brain as well. So for example, this guy didn't really do. A good job here, right? Um, so we'd like to fill in the gaps, um, and this is you know the basic concept. Now, how can you apply this concept in product design or in, yeah in digital design? Is um, is very basic stuff. It's very sad. This is my face, but I have almost been on it. So you can apply it like this, um, and uh, yeah. So basically, whenever you see this badge, it kind of you have the tendency to get rid of it. And that is applying the precise concept of completeness because you don't feel that that should be there and you want to fix it somehow. Um, another example, oh sorry, uh, another example is this, right? So you have some cards here and, uh, and you have like this empty card, this empty UI element and uh, you have that notion to fill it in. You understand how it's gonna work. You can turn this into this or you can turn this into this. So you understand the concept and you want to fill in the gap. This is a good example how to create new elements in UI. So you want to fill them in using the persuasive tactic. Now, um, yeah, so, so you don't want to leave it empty, right? That's, uh, that's the basic premise. Now, um, another thing, another practice, another tactic is positive re reinforcement. Now, this means you're providing feedback for continuous action. So, as you proceed to do some interface, you give them something, some, some reward or something that will make them tick, right? make them act. Uh, 
One of these things is, again, used in the gaming, gaming industry. This is from World of Warcraft, and whenever you level up, you get like the sparkles and kind of like fancy animation, and it's, it feels right. It's, it, there's some kind of like sense of satisfaction whenever you reach this point, and it's because of that that they're trying to reinforce you and, and appreciate the moment, right? So how can we do that in, a, in, a, in product design? So um, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was like a couple of months ago, um, Julian Richards presented um, about um, how they design at, at Pellas, and, uh, and he presented this slide, and he mentioned that um, they, they try to, the, this is their, their, their sign up process or configuration process, and they're, they're trying to make the, the, the flow a little bit more um, positive, so they are mentioning very positive messages, we chose you, this is great, you did, you did the right thing, and, and they're very, like, trying to confirm that you're doing the right action. Um, and the, the very same thing is like when you, whenever you have like a check, checklist of things to do and you go through that, you have that feeling that you know you need that step kind of like tick on every single to do right. <coughs> uh, another another example in product design is um, is animation um, and the, the ability to provide feedback. Uh, this is from Google Material, although it's kind of like this is not official. I can see from the color, but. Um, it's um, that feeling when you know what is happening, that, that reinfor reinforcement of the right action that's going to happen, that is uh, part of the persuasive design. So feedback at the right time and pleasant feedback, so smooth animation like this, makes you kind of feel right and makes you feel good about the stuff that you're doing. Um, do you know this? Who of you have ever... Yeah. It's a uh, it's from Asana, and this is whenever you it's a it's a hack that you can apply to Asana, and it, whenever you complete the task, there's going to be a unicorn uh, jumping to your screen, and that's that's amazing. It makes you feel like appreciate that that little moment. Mm -hmm. Now, um, another concept is um, lost aversion. So um, when you prefer to avoid losses um, to acquiring gains, so this is a, a diagram again. Um, and yeah, so you get the idea. So you most probably, you don't, like, um, whenever someone hands you something and you have it already, it's, you're more, li more likely, you, you feel more painful to give it back rather than, than, than keep it. So that's the basic concept. And for example, um, we've been in India and uh, the street vendors would give you random stuff in your hands just to get that kind of feeling, oh, I actually like it, I might buy it. And, you know they know what they're doing, so um, this is this is something that is uh, known by people. Right? Just now. Um, so yeah, the feeling of losing uh, something is is really bad. Now, how can you apply this in product design again? Um, so this is one of the applications that I've designed, and it's a GPS navigation, and we have a, this business model that um, you you could you could purchase the application and you could just use it, right? So it was like one time. Um, purchase and you, you, you could get like the lifetime license. And uh, uh, we tried different models as well. And one of them was we let you try the applications for a certain amount of days. And after 15 days, we would, we would cancel the voice navigation. So basically, the, the whole purpose of the application would be gone, right? <laughs> why, why would you use a, a GPS navigation without the, the sound, right? Without the, the, the voice guidance. and. Uh, and it actually worked. It worked really well. So those people were missing that feature. They understood, understood the benefit, and they wanted to continue. And that's why they purchased the, 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 the full package. Um, so, yeah. So it was oh, obviously there were some, some feedback loops and stuff like that. Like you are you can lose these features and blah blah. So we weren't that evil, but it was there. Um, another. Um, practice is saving for tomorrow. Um, this is this is super famous. It's used in every single CRO practice as every single agency. They're trying to do this. It's very famous. It's very it's almost abused in North America and uh, e-commerce specifically, uh, where they um, where they won't prevent or won't show you the full price. Of, you would get these little um, updates or additions in your shopping cart or or um, some additional fees, uh, like Airbnb or, or or these guys, right? This is uh, like the the the, the phone carrier. 
picture. So they, they do this stuff. So they tell you, you know, this is iPhone 5S, and it's a bargain. And it's just 129 and you should buy it because it's, it's like nothing, and you get all these fancy icons and stuff. And, you know, they, 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 they have it here that it's a, a two-year contract. But um, the thing is, this is, they take this as um, something that is kind of like automatic because it's been used so many times, no one really questions whether this is the right thing to do. The phone is actually much more, um, much more expensive than, than without the plan. And, um, and if you just purchase the, 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 the cheapest plan they have, plus the phone separately, you'd actually pay less for the, for the actual phone. So it's really, like there's the trickery. Or you can get this beauty for, 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 for nothing. You can get it for free. free. Um, so this, yeah, it's the same thing as like with, the, with booking um, a hotel or something. So you would get to, you are kind of like looking forward to it. You book it, but they're never going to charge you up front. They're going to charge you some small sum, and then when you arrive to the station, they're going to charge you for the booking fee or something. So it's, it's, it's called saving for tomorrow. So um, that concept is uh, part of the purchase design. Um, yeah. So how can we how can we apply this in Europe? This is this is easy. Um, um, yeah. Another. Um, that's you know we're gonna. I'm not gonna cover that part right now because we're gonna have that in the exercise in the end. Uh, but um, I'm gonna go uh, talk about the sub branch of that, and that is the premium model. This is from South Park episode when uh, this is Canadian Prince and he was uh, yeah he was introducing premium model to. Um, to uh, kids in the States. And um, yeah, this is, it's, it was really fun. It was over exaggerating the problem, but um, premium eventually means the same thing. So it's uh, free stuff, uh, but it's not really free in the future if you really want to pay for it. Uh, and yeah, so this is how the episode uh, escalated into Canadian pop and the mobile gaming you know, fire, and there's this little Canadian statement here. and. Um, and it was about kind of over exaggerated, over exaggerated picture of uh, what a premium is about. So it's almost like abusing the addiction of um, the, the people who are kind of like attached to that model. And there, there's like 90% people playing the games, and only 10 people, are, 10 percent of people are paying. And those companies are making millions. It's it's like it almost feels like there's some kind of addiction problem. Uh, they're, they're, they are trying to monetize. So, of course, there is a better way how to do that. So let's uh, let's look at what um, free and pride design means. Um, yeah, just just. Talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, there is a better way though. Um, one of them is um, uh, again from uh, from the gaming industry. It's reaching some kind of a plateau. So, for example, we th 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 there is a way how to estimate. Um, and games are specifically good at this, uh, is the point where you're kind of tipping the scales and you're kind of like over the, kind of tipping over the edge and you're kind of willing to uh, be really enjoying the game and willing to pay for it. So they measure that single moment and, uh, and that is, you know, that, that is something you can make use of um, and monetize subscription-based models. So not subscription-based like in order to uh, get to higher levels and you need to pay more and more and more, but subscription, like monthly recurring subscription. Again, this is used in uh, World of Warcraft, right? So you would reach certain level with your character and then they would monetize uh, the, like on the monthly subscriptions, you would be asked to pay like $15 in order to pay another month, another month. It's less evil than the, the, the abusive um, addictive method uh, used in mobile games nowadays. So this is a, a more ethical way to do it, although it's still very profitable as a company that created the game is making a lot of money. Now, um, uh, the last tactic uh, from uh, this, this part is called susceptible moments. Um, when we are prone to act as desired, um, so these, the, the, um, This is um, the, the, the peanuts from, uh, from the airplane, right? So when you sit in the plane, uh, you always order something, or if you don't, then you have like it's very kind of like you're prone to order something and you're thinking about it, even the small bag of 
emails is always better than nothing. And uh, and yeah, so it's it, like, why the hell would you want to eat peanuts on a plane? I have no idea, but I always do. I always like to eat them there. So I, it's it's one of those moments when you come to an access desire. Now, um, yeah, I, I'm going to show you another picture here, mm -hmm. and this is this is what you would get. Um, and it's the same thing, right? So you, I really like the food on the plane. I have no idea why, because it's not really good. But I kind of like the moment when you serve the food, and, and it's it's a susceptible moment. It's a good example, and they really taste it. And you know, they, they have some stuff here, but it's still not the best. Um, some healthy stuff. Um, so let's apply this in product design. Um, this is my friend's application. He designed this task manager called Taski. He's a very talented designer, um, but he's not really good at conversion optimization because um, what Taski does is it tracks your task and creates insanely looking dashboard, very fancy stuff. Um, and he didn't monetize it well because it, the, the way how you get to this point is you would need to navigate through a series of interactions and there was well hidden settings and he tried to pull it up front but no one really noticed and it was already too late and his product eventually is not very successful. But what he could do is, and that is the susceptible moment I was talking about, something to steal, when something feels right. So when you're completing those tasks, he could have a set of, I don't know, and he can measure that, set of 20 tasks. If you complete 20 tasks, I'm gonna show you a prompt that's gonna ask you to uh, sign up for for this premium feature. So uh, that would be most definitely a good thing to do for him, and he wouldn't be in trouble with that application. Another example is from, and this is um, well known in, in uh, conversion optimization, um, is an example of long page versus a short page, right? This is from Basecamp or high, it was from high rise. Uh, so what they did is they changed this to this, and the CTA was nowhere on this long page except for here at the bottom. And uh, uh, apparently that was the very right thing to do. So him in that right moment when to present the call to action was at the bottom of the page. So they had uh, a lot more conversions and a lot longer page. Now, um, yeah, so that was the first set of um, tactics um, that I've generally uh, known. Now, during the holidays, I read another book, um, which is from uh, Nick Kalenda, and he ha they, they, they have the thing for numbers, so he has seven things, but actually, if you, if you know in this video, you will roll off what the, the book refers for. Um, and again, it's a good amount of things, because those things are really difficult to understand. What does it mean when the perception is only really fast? You like something to pronounce it. Um, so I translated it. It doesn't sound that well, but S F S this. Um, and um, yeah, so this is uh, this is translated version of Kalinda's uh, principles. So seven expectations, uh, fighting attitudes, or consistency, the social pressure, improving perceptions, tweaking the requests, motivating more, and sustaining system in compliance. I'm going to talk about these, um, but um, yeah, I I like to have a break. Um, so if you guys want to do something with me right now. Um, this, is this is from this book, so if you, if you read that book, it's not going to work for you. But I'd like you to, to um, if you have enough room, can you stand up? <coughs> and uh, I tell you your hands are huge magnets, like magnets that are attracted to each other. Uh, stand like this and do this. And pretend your hands are kind of like getting closer together because there's a, there's a both of them are very powerful magnets. Now close your eyes and stay like that for ten seconds and pretend they are like oh, extremely powerful magnets. Don't open your eyes yet. Just pretend. Fight the powers. Try to not to touch the hands if they're kind of too much. Okay, open your eyes. Uh, who touched uh, any? Oh, you have to fight too far away. Who touched the, who did that actually managed to clap or touch it at least at some, some point? The other hand. Okay. Those who did that are more prone to, to get hypnotized easily. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and those who did, uh, the persuasive tactics are going to work for them really well. 
So this is a simple, simple test from, from the book. You can sit down.